What is going on out there, fish and fam? Ray Sharifi with Dirty Hookers. I'm gonna be going through everything that's in my tackle bag for yellowtail fishing and or offshore fishing. I figured it'd be a good time to make a video like this because Fred Hall show is right around the corner and that's the best time to load up on all your terminal tackle. The best sales are always at Fred Hall. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. We're gonna start off with the front bag because it's the smallest and easiest one to go through. So, first we got crappie jigs. A little spoon, six pound test. I'm just kidding. So what I actually have in here, or this little pocket, I always have some egg weights. We're running low right now, so I'm gonna have to load up on more of those. Uh, motion sickness pills. I have never been seasick. I've felt nauseous a couple times, but I've never been seasick. I gotta knock on wood after that. You're on wood, so I'll just knock on that. But whether or not I get seasick or whether or not you get seasick, I always be precautious. I take two of these at night, 12 hours before I end up on the boat. And then um, about an hour or half an hour before I get on the boat, I take two more. These ones last 12 hours. I know there's some 24 hour ones out there. I just haven't come across them. And these are always at Walmart, so we always get those. Next, you always want some extra hooks easy access to get to. We got two watt, three watt, and then we got some size ones. Realistically, you can get away with two watts and even and size ones or one watt. Those are pr pretty much the only two hooks you're gonna be needing uh, unless you're targeting 40 plus pound fish. But up to 30 pounds, I mean two watt is perfectly fine. And then when you got those little tiny baits, like little three inch and four inch sardines or uh, anchovies, that's when I use the size ones. Got some swivels. Those don't come into play a whole lot, but I just have them just to be just to be safe. And I always have this stick bait in here just because it's easy access. I actually made this stick bait. I'm pretty pretty stoked on it and happy with how it came out. Um, I modeled it after the Shimano Colt Sniper stick baits, and I tested it out. I caught about seven or eight Bonito on it in one day. In my opinion, not narking on. Shimano Colt Sniper stick baits because I love those things. In my opinion, this thing swims even better than the Colt Sniper stick baits. I think this is a three ounce, got a three ounce egg weight just in case we uh, end up at the islands. And then I have some hooks in there that fell out and then I just, I got a two ounce weight. That doesn't need to be in there, but it is. Next, we're gonna go through the top pouch. So this, this is just unorganized because I always just throw stuff in there. Believe it or not, I have a Wahoo wire in here. The Wahoo wire uh, rig's already rigged up. Those aren't super essential for how the weather is right now, but come peak season, all it takes is one storm, one freak storm to push some warm or hot water towards our way a little bit. You'd be surprised what you'll find out there every now and then especially with these past couple years that have been going on, there's been some really weird activity going on down south and even locally here. But down south, a little over a year ago, during peak season, there was Wahoo swimming at the Coronado Islands. So you never know. Just, just have these just to be prepared. That, at least I do. Got some extra braid, never know. Got some leader. Usually my leader's on the side pouches, but not organized. 20 pound fluorocarbon, uh, 30 pound fluorocarbon. Both of these are Seaguar Blue Label. I always keep an, an extra reel or two. If my dad comes with me, we always have two extra reels in here. I just happen to have the Lexa 400 in here. Sometimes I have my Metalloid. I mean, other times I have different reels in here, but I always keep an extra reel in here. One can bust on you and you just, you gotta swap it out real quick. So it's always helpful to have an extra reel in here. I always have a bulk spool of 40 pounds. 40 pounds, probably the most used line size that I use especially for yellowtail, surface irons, or any kind of lure, I always tie 40 pound because I hate losing jigs and lures in general. So I always use 40 pound when it comes to, when it comes to a lure, because it's always a reaction bite. They're not gonna see the line. So 40 pounds pretty much my go-to for lures. I uh, got sunscreen in there and a scale. Oh, and a popper. So this has more to do with offshore fishing, but I got a popper in there and I think that's, I think that's all, uh, but I got a popper in there as well. Doesn't hurt to keep a popper in there. Again, you never know what's gonna happen with these weird conditions that have been going on uh, for the past couple years. Next, we're gonna go through this side pouch. 
Always keep glasses cleaners in there because you get water splatter on your sunglasses all day long on those boats. And I got more leader line. And then on this side, more torpedo weights and my fishing license. Working our way down, we're gonna go with this one first actually. So on here, I got three tackle boxes, pretty much covers everything that I need out on the water, whether I'm offshore or at the islands. Depending on where we're going, if we're going offshore or at the islands, that establishes what I'm gonna be putting in my bag. If we're hitting the islands, I'll actually take one of these boxes out and I will put a calico box in, in there. This is full of swim baits, jig heads, torpedo weights, uh, everything that I need for calico fishing. But if we're going offshore or I'm confident that we're not going to be hitting calico whatsoever, then I got these three tackle boxes. This one right here is purely yo-yo jigs, heavy irons, mainly Taddy 4-0s, like four full-size yo-yo jigs. And also some Salus jigs in there. Uh, we got some Salus 6-Xs, another Salus 6-X Junior, and a lot of Taddy 4-0s. We got the Holographic Mint, Holographic Mackerel, don't know what that color is called. Holographic Blue, we love those holographic colors. Also got a full chrome. We got squid. I only use squid if I have any uh, update on squid being in the area and squid being fed on. So that's the only time I throw the squid one. Scrambled egg and Dorado. But uh, my go-to's are usually scrambled egg and Dorado. And then I also really like the Taddy 9s. Actually my go all-time go-to if, if I'm not using a flat fall or one of these full-size jigs, uh, my go-to is a Taddy 9. Uh, this is our flat fall box, assorted flat fall box. And I say assorted because it's not just all flat falls. We also got these, uh, the new Taddy jigs. We went ahead and put some big, I don't even know what size hook that is, maybe a dot. I'm not sure. But uh, I got the new Taddy jigs and then the, uh, the squish jigs. I don't know if you guys have tried the squish jigs or not. A lot of people don't like them. I personally love them. I've done really, really well on these. Uh, especially this color right here. The chrome and glow. Had a lot of luck on the chrome and glow. Uh, besides that, my go-to color for the flat fall is the sardine. You can tell by how beat up that jig is. That That's mine and my dad's go-to color. That's our favorite colors, as you can tell with the uh, stick bait I made. I made it sardine colored. I don't know if you see that, but I got a popper over there, sardine colored. That's the assorted flat fall box. Anything from 80 grams to 500 grams, all inside there right there. This is basically my tuna slash bonito box. And I don't know about you guys, but when I go tuna fishing, I pretty much downsize everything unless we're going bluefin fishing because you never know what size bluefin you're gonna run into. But uh, skipjack and schoolie yellowfin, I, I just treat them as bonito and I downsize everything. Uh, like I said, cold sniper stick baits, love those things a lot. Here's a comparison on the shape. This one's a little more rounded off, but I don't, I don't know what I did right with mine. Yeah, that's a Dirty Hooker's original right there, baby. Uh, got Colt Sniper stick baits in here, and then I got a popper. Like I said, this is Benito slash Tuna Box um, right there. Got a popper. I made that popper as well. Same color scheme as the stick bait that I made, but it's supposed to be an orca popper, so I got, it's got the bubble chamber on there. With some owner hooks and owner split rings. Got Taddy C's. Painted this jig. Only time I'll throw chrome is either for barracuda or tuna. Mint, I love that mint color. This is actually the surf siren I was using during the uh, epic surf siren blow up video. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but I'll leave the link right there. This is the jig right here. I was actually fishing for barracuda when I caught that fish. It was a 18 pound yellow toe, and I thought it was barracuda that got dogged by a sea lion. And that's why in that whole video, I was thumbing that spool super hard just to, I was, I, I didn't want to battle a seal, so I just wanted to pull the hook. Luckily the hook didn't pull because I wasn't battling a seal and uh, I was actually on a yellowtail. So if you guys watch my videos enough, you know I have really, really bad luck with sea lions. I'm just really lucky that that hook didn't pull. So there's that, got Dorado colored. Then I got all my stick baits up here. This color did really, really well for me during the yellowfin season. It's all beat up and scratched up, you can't really tell. Caught a handful of yellowfin on that one. 
I've got a full size. I think that one's called Sand Eel. That one works really good for Yellowtail from what I've heard. I haven't used this color yet, but uh, that's what I heard. And then I got my smaller flat falls in here. Yeah, this is 80 gram. I'll use these for Bonito, also for Yellowfin and Skipjack. Besides that, we got small Colt Snipers in here. And also this mini jig, mini yo-yo jig. I don't even know what that is. But I saw it at Turner's and I figured that'd be a good little tuna jig. And then the larger jigs, just in case tuna or Bonito want a bigger presentation. So I got the Colt Sniper. And 80 gram, the Katy Perry color, flat fall. Apparently does really well for tuna. I personally haven't had any luck on the Katy Perry color. Seen people doing really well with that color. I just personally haven't had the luck on it. The anchovy in 130 size. That one does pretty well for me as well. But uh, again, my go-to color when it comes to flat falls is the sardine color. That one's always produced for me and always done really well. Next are these side pouches. The side pouches are always surface irons unless I'm targeting something else. I don't have a surface iron box as you might have figured out. I just keep the surface irons in here. I figure I don't need any more than that. Uh, but this side is just plain mint. These are the three steel bait jigs that I have. Uh, you see the logo on there. This one is the V pattern. This one's the line pattern. I've used this one a lot and it's produced every single time that I've used it. Caught my personal best calico bass on it, personal best bonito on it, bunch of yellowtail on this, but not my PB. Hopefully that changes this year. And then this is the uh, the diamond plated pattern. I don't know if the camera's picking that up that well. But those are my three steel bait jigs. Been my go-to jigs since I've got them. Uh, I got this Salus 7X. It's like a melting mint pattern. I don't know what to call that, but I like that one a lot. This one actually swims really, really well. The Salus 7Xs, I mean, most of the time they're going to swim, but every now and then you'll get one that just doesn't swim. I, I, I have a full mint Salus 7X that just does not swim whatsoever. But like I said, most of the time these will swim very well. And then on this side is my colored surface iron side. We got the, I think this is either mint sardine or rainbow sardine. I think it's rainbow sardine. Teddy 45. This color's always done well for me as well. Blue and white, Teddy 45, but it's always done well. It's all beat up. I don't think I've ever got a Benito on there, so that's all just from straight yellowtail. This color right here we started using towards the end of last season. And this color does really, really well. The holographic purple, I was blown away. I wouldn't expect purple to be a good color, but uh, surprisingly, it's a really, really good color. This is an amazing swimmer too. I'm not an expert on picking out good jigs, uh, but what I've gathered is you want some really good off offset hips. The hole is also offset. It's hugging one side really, really well. I've heard that helps out a lot as well. Whether I know if that's true or not, I, don't ask me, I've never paid attention to the good swimmers, but uh, that's that's proof right there because that's a good swimming jig. Hole is off-centered and the uh, you also got some offset hips. So um, those are all my surface irons. Now you may be wondering why I just have the pure mint side of surface irons, and that's because mint is my go-to color. And the reason why I keep on saying go-to baits, go-to color, go-to lures is because I cannot stress enough that unless you have full 100% trust in whatever you have tied on, do not throw it. If you're throwing something that you don't have trust in, you might be working that bait wrong, you might be, you're not using it to its full potential. You just convince yourself that it's a not a good lure or a not a good bait to be throwing in general. And this goes for all styles of fishing, period all styles of fishing. Trout, striper, bass, calico bass, bonito, bluegill, anything. Whatever you're fishing for, don't be throwing something that you don't have full trust in. And I cannot stress that enough. But with that being said, I do want you to open your eyes to all the possibilities that you can. Practice other items that you haven't used before before you go out on a trip because you'll be surprised what works and what doesn't work. All it takes is one good trip and one good experience for you to love that bait for the whole rest of your life. All it took is one good trip on a solid mint lure and ever since then I was hooked on mint. And I mean wax wings, I've actually literally never used a wax wing but I keep it in my tackle box anyways because a lot of people swear by them. Heard they've done well, I've seen them produce a lot of fish. Uh, I just haven't had the chance to personally try it out myself. And speaking of which, it's like the stick baits, they do really well for yellowtail too. The stick baits have actually been getting more popular in California like, over the past year. I've been seeing a lot more people throwing them for yellowtail. And that's what's crazy is this is barely becoming a popular bait 
over the past year. But in Australia and in New Zealand, kingfish are literally the exact same fish as a yellowtail and that's what they use out there. I've had quite a few people tell me like saying, damn, I really wish a yellowtail would hit a popper. The reason why people don't think poppers would work for, for a yellowtail is just because it's pretty much unheard of. Nobody's really tried, in my opinion. I've never seen people try to use poppers for a yellowtail, but in New Zealand and Australia, that's how they target yellowtail. They use poppers and they use stick baits over pretty much anything else. They also use butterfly jigs, vertical jigs. That's their main techniques out there. And they, they just have the strategies and techniques that just we don't know about. And the same thing goes for the people in Australia and in, uh, and in New Zealand. Like they don't know about surface irons. Pretty much anyone outside of California and a little bit of Mexico really doesn't know what a surface iron is. They think our techniques are whack, but we think their techniques might be whack. And I don't think an Australian that targets, or a New Zealand, in New Z whatever, uh, I, don't, I don't think that they would know what a surface iron is or ever heard of one unless they watch Yellowtail videos because they're looking up Kingfish videos. They're not looking up Yellowtail videos. Just explore your options. Try out new things, and uh, I, I really hope this video helped you guys out a lot, especially with Fred Hall right around the corner. You don't know what to get. Maybe this video helped you decide on what you want to buy. If you guys see me at Fred Hall, please stop me and say what's up. I really love meeting you guys. It, it means a lot to me that you guys watch my videos. I appreciate all the support that you guys provide for me. It's, it's amazing. YouTube has helped me grow as a fisherman a lot. Even this YouTube channel has helped me grow as a fisherman as well. Besides learning on the water uh, from other fishermen, YouTube in the comment section, uh, all you guys have helped me critique my mistakes and it's, it's that constructive criticism that I really need. I have learned a lot from you guys commenting in my videos, telling me what I should try, telling me things that I should do. I can only imagine that a lot of other YouTubers out there feel the same way. I mean, Fisherman's Life, if you guys watch him, he'll say all the time. He always says like, oh, so-and-so, taught me to try this out and I really like this technique. Oh, so-and-so told me to try this and this has helped me uh, throughout all day. And it seems that almost like 80% of his techniques and, and tactics to target fish, he's learned from his comment section. You guys commenting with new techniques that I should try or something that I should do a little bit differently, different strategies, so, like a different method to work a bait, anything like that, different baits, like this YouTube channel has helped me grow as a fisherman so much and I can only thank you guys for that. I think I've pretty much covered everything that I need to cover. Again, I really hope that this video helped you guys learn something new or opened your eyes a little bit to different baits. And also I hope what you guys have learned from what's in my tackle bag might have helped you a little bit as well. Hope to see you guys at Fred Hall. Not sure what day I'm going yet. It'll probably be that Saturday, unless I can get that Friday off. It'll most likely be that Saturday. But if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll see what day I'll be there. That's all I got for you guys today. As always, please give this video a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. That's right, like and subscribe, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Hope this video helped you guys out, and I will see you guys next time. Oh, oh, okay. Joke, 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 joke. <laughs> <God damn. laughs>